Her Chronicles. This is episode 10. You're on today with Miss Scar, and also we have Firefox. Hi. We also have my very good friend, Jamie. Hey. So, um, we've had um, an interesting week. Um, so, but what we want to talk about today, um, today's topic is going to be about confidence. Confidence, learning, and personal growth, and kind of what pushes us to grow, what challenges us to grow, and kind of what what confidence means to kind of each of us. So, I don't know who wants to take off. I don't know, Firefox, do you want to take off? What is confidence to you? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, well, confidence is something I don't really feel like I have a lot of. Really? Yeah, coming into my 30s has been awesome. Like, I'm I'm newly 30, but like it's, I finally am starting to feel comfortable in my own skin. Um, but after I had a lot of health problems with my second pregnancy and so I've gained a lot of weight, my body doesn't like even feel like mine. Okay. And so there's a lot of anxiety that goes along with that. And so for me, like I just kind of try to remember my true self and just to be honest and everything else like is temporary. Right. You know, so it's like a constant daily minute by minute sometimes reminder. Like I'm at the grocery store and I'm just like, everybody's so much better than me. They're prettier. Their hair is better. Like, you know what I mean? And it's just, that's a dumb example, but it's, it's kind of a daily struggle, especially for my kids to be comfortable who I am, where I am, even when where I am isn't the best version necessarily of myself, but to be able to say like, that's okay because I'm still going to be internally like the right reflection and put that out there. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting. You said, um, at newly 30 and in your thirties. And it's funny because the minute I turned 30, it was something about 30. And I think I'm the oldest one in the room. I'm 38 or am I 30? Yeah, I'll be 39 (laughs) this year. (laughs) I'm 38. And it was something about 30. It was like the switch just came on. It was yeah. like, who, like, I just knew, I, I think I, I just was more aware of who I was totally. more of, I had more of a defined direction of where I wanted to go. Um, you know, with the remainder of my years, you know, you kind of at 30, you're like, I don't know. My, well, my grandparents haven't lived past 60. So I wow. think about that. So I'm like at yeah. 30, I was thinking like, I only have maybe 30 more years and that's, I don't like to, Think like that, but that was my true thought at the time. Yeah. So, you know, I just, I got more serious about things, I thought. I yeah. think I got more intentional, mm-hmm. you know, um, I got more connected with God too. Uh-huh. But it was, it was like something kicked in. It was like, I had no kids. I was independent. I was taking care of myself. My mom was like, if I were you, because she had, you know, her first child at 18. And then Me I came too. seven years later. And so she was like, you know, and she would tell me and my girlfriends and she'd be like, you know, if I was y'all, I would look in the mirror and tell myself. And I truly started to do that. I don't know what happened in the last few years, but, you know, that was what happened for me at 30. So it's interesting that you said at 30, something kind of shifted for you and it was there. Yeah. You know, definitely. What about you, Jay? Because to me, Jamie just, I mean, she exudes confidence. I mean, she walks in the room. She's Jamie's. How tall are you? 5'10". Yeah, and and she's gorgeous. Yeah. I'm 5'10", I'm I'm too, but, like, you're, like, a swan. Like, <laughs> yes. so beautiful, like, floating everywhere. Right. And it's like, oh, teach me your way. Because I, like, trip over nothing. No. So. <laughs> no, that's so... I love it. And I love that, um, Monier, you, you chose this topic. And um, when it comes to confidence, I think what I like to do first, sometimes when I hear words... Um, I like to look up the meaning in the dictionary so I can just come from a place of like, you know, coming from right where it is. So it says a feeling of self-assurance arising from one's appreciation of one's own abilities. abilities I wrote it down too. Oh, did you? Yes, we're twins. Okay. (laughs) So, um, in what I would have to say to something like that is I feel like confidence when it comes to me is... I think that is one thing that I do well and have done well for a long time because I feel early on it was rough. You know, I was also very skinny and tall and, you know, I was taller than the boys. It was just everything that I thought it was supposed to be. It wasn't either. And I was like, okay, this is, but I really liked people and I like to have fun. So I leaned really far into that and was just always less concerned about what was. So you found the good things early. 
You found yeah. the good things about yourself early. I had to be excited because I was like, oh, this part just, it just didn't feel right. Right. And when I tie it into like the rest of my life, like I throw parties, I like to go to parties, I'm <laughs> always looking for a party. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's just kind of like, and when I say parties, just a good time, food, drinks, friends, people kicking it. That's, you know, what I like to do. But um, focusing, yeah, on that and that being more important than things that you couldn't change was why I felt very early on, even when people said things, because I remember mean things being said and whatever, but I learned to absorb it early. Like, you know what? All right. Like, you don't have to like this. So I didn't spend, I guess, as much time um, thinking about things like that, even if I did feel, uh, you know, we complain to our girlfriends, we might say this or that, but I do feel like that's something, and it's something that you evolve into, but I guess I think your maybe. parents had something to do with that too. Yeah. Especially, Absolutely. you know, you're, yeah, a, a, in, a, in a two-parent home at that, mm, so very I think blessed. that made a difference. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Because I know for me, like, you know, it's, people are, they're surprised when they either see my lack of confidence, hear my lack of confidence, mm-hmm. or find out that I am, I, I, can be really insecure mm-hmm. and it's because I don't feel like it was you know it was spoken to me you know it was more of a tear down and in my home it was you know it was a verbal abuse it wasn't it just wasn't a build-up it wasn't your good qualities it was all of the things you did not do you know so and then two it was don't think you're too cute don't think you're, you know, so all I heard was something right. about my looks even now. But yeah. it's funny because you would think that I like to receive compliments. I hate receiving compliments. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it was because mm-hmm. I heard, don't think you're too cute. And then to hear someone say, oh, you're so pretty or your, your hair or your eyes. Mm-hmm. It was like a conscious, like, no, just, I, no, I, I don't, I don't see that. You know, I, I do now. I see those qualities now, but for a long time, I didn't. I didn't, I, and I think it was because of the family, what what I was around growing up. Because it, it, it starts at home, I think. Confidence yeah. building, definitely, I think, starts at home. Definitely. I agree. Yeah. I remember my mom used to, she'd hug me, and if she could feel my ribs, she'd be like, oh, you're such a skinny mini, you look so good. And if she couldn't, she'd be like, okay, we need to watch what you're eating. And yeah. I was 5'10", 130 pounds, a state athlete, like, yeah. There were pretty much always ribs, you know. Right, what I mean? like, right. <laughs> like, like, all the time, right? right. Yeah, <laughs> right. So I was like, okay, then I guess I'll throw away my lunch today, right? You know? And like right. that always stayed with me. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 The way we process information and hold on to it, and what we decide to do with it too, kind of determines how we continue to see things yeah. and what lens we end up living from. And um, it has been really beneficial to throw it away quickly because mm-hmm. when we marinate on it yeah. and then it comes with time because then there's understanding. There's like so many dynamics to it. Like when you say that about your mom, like I'm pretty sure now you can look back and think like, oh, well, that was her perspective. And that's what right. she might have had for herself. Oh, yeah, because I don't fault her. her. Right. You, you, know, you can't. Yeah. Once you go mm-hmm. to an age where you, you just know how being a human works, Absolutely. it's just kind of like, okay, it's up to me Yeah. Um, in a way that's very deep and personal because – I am love. I am, I am what is coming out of me. So right, it has to be good from the inside. So finding those ways, like all the time, and like letting go of things that don't, you know, when it feels funny, right? That doesn't feel right, you know, right? When somebody right. like how you said with both being on both, oh, you're too, you see, like you're too much or you're not enough. That's very confusing. Yeah. It, it, so it, it to was. not even hold on to any of it, I don't know. I learned to do that. Every, I think we're always learning to do that. But I think it adds to our confidence because you can gauge things with understanding and love in a different way. How do you continue to build your confidence now? Mm, I would say, well, we kind of talked about it earlier, just but self care, like um, that's absolutely so important. Oh Spe- I think especially yes. for women because if we're off balance. I'm all about finding your balance, mm. being on balance. I was telling her, I spoke to my therapist about, you know, I'm <laughs> off balance. That's why I'm here checking in. I hadn't seen her since last year. And it's imp- it's important. I do think that's, that's a mean, place to I mean, start. I mean, baths, pedicures, like, I'm going to go buy some lingerie tomorrow. <laughs> I haven't done that in a while. And I get busy and I'm trying to do things, right. whatever, but... I need some moments to love on myself. Right. I'm getting my manicure pedicure. I went to the spa last week and you were saying right. how you had a membership. Yes. I have friends that make bath salts, so I'll do something for you and you give me those salts, girl. <laughs> <Right>. Tonight, <laughs> I 
I need to relax. <laughs> and that's it. Yes. So, but that type of thing, I can't wake up in the morning like, okay, hi, world. Yeah. What are we doing? When like, you feel I good, you do. It, yeah. it does. Yep. It does boost your confidence when you feel good, when you look good, you know, it, you it feel does. Relaxed. You have Absolutely. that moment of peace for yourself, you know, before the world starts grasping at what they need from you. Like, I need my time in the morning. I need, right. The email can wait. To the <laughs> right. <laughs> like, right. I need to breathe. I need to do something. Even if it's five minutes, 10 minutes, 15, I need to do something. I need to read something. Me, I'll, of course, say a prayer, do something quiet. I like to make tea and just kind of hold it in my hand. Yeah. And just kind of sit with it. But I say that adds to confidence because I have centering in my day, knowing where I'm coming from, kind of like what my intentions are. Right, right. I checked in with me. I feel good. And I can respond to the world accordingly. So I do have a little bit more. It's like, I I know what I'm doing. Like, not I know what I'm doing, like, but it's kind of like I'm coming from a very intentional place because I started this morning and when I'm like loving on myself and taking my time. and right. You know, luckily. What about you? With you, you Firefox, you have kids, so like, <laughs> <laughs> like and, a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> what? Right. For so you? and yeah, and you have what? You have a teen and a toddler. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. So that's mm-hmm. how do you you know find your balance and? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I think I think so much wisdom has just been shared right now. That's really just true gems, and I think. You know, for any of our listeners, I want to kind of speak directly to them for a mm-hmm. second about this because I'm, I would say, a sticky person. Stuff sticks to me, and it sticks for sometimes a while. Yeah. And my teen, he's a roll off the bat kind of duck, a lot like you, Jamie. Like, he can decide what he's going to keep and what he's not. And that sometimes is innate, and, and sometimes it's learned, and sometimes it's both. But for, for the people out there who are sticky, like mm-hmm. me, just to have what Jamie said, like really resonate, like it's a choice. You get to choose what sticks and you might have to digest it a little bit and pull it apart a little bit and be able to say, you know what? That's actually not me. That's really important for somebody like me who is sticky, who will, is that me? Is that now part of who I am? Right. And I was a, um, a rape trauma counselor for a long time. And we would tell our survivors like, that would call in on the hotline, not immediately after a trauma, but that would call in, you make a list when you're healthy of the things that you do that are positive coping right. mechanisms and then the things you do that are negative. So, like, for example, one glass of wine is a positive. <laughs> right. Six glasses, that goes in the middle. Exactly. You know? Like, right. What makes you feel good the next morning? Exactly. Exactly. Right. exactly. Right. You know, because when you're in crisis or in a, a sticky spot or or just down or off balance, yeah. like you said, sometimes it's hard to identify what can feel good. And you can call a friend or your mom or anybody and they'll tell you what works for them. But that may not work for me. Like, or for you. And like, for me, I hate naps. I, I hate them. And everyone's like, oh, just take a nap mm-hmm. or, or just do this. That doesn't work for me. Exactly. So I have to look at my list because I may not be able to think about it. And it's just all those things that you said, like with tea and and making having intention throughout your day like Mm -hmm. that's just such a beautiful way to start your day and it does the ripple effect just goes it's so Mm -hmm. important and so I just I just hope anybody out there who's struggled with anything at any point really hears because there's so much wisdom that was just shared it's just it's beautiful yeah and it's making the time not finding the time it's absolutely making the time so yeah yeah yeah. so it it, you, you have to do it you have to do it. And I, I like what you said about, like, there being the sticky people and it, some being innate, some being learned. Because I'm a little bit of both. Me some too. things I can yeah. let roll off my back. Like, whatever. My, my term is whatever and it is what it is. Like, you know, it is what it is and whatever. And that to me is just, I have to let it go because there's mm-hmm. nothing I can do about it. The serenity prayer is something major for me, too. Like, if I can't control it, I have to, like, what what am I, why, why am I trying to deal with it? Why? Yeah. So, it you know, it's just... I don't even know. I lost my train of thought real quick. So, <laughs> but I going on a tangent. But it's just, oh, it's we do, we have to be in tune and and really really make the time, yeah. make the time, and not find it because self care is not selfish. No, no, it's it's, not. it's a and must. people think it is. Yeah, it's mis. I don't know where we got that from. I think we have it's to, a woman thing, you know, like you're supposed to take care of everybody else, and then there's no time left for you, right? And that's just your job, right? 
you know. And, and, and I think they get used to that. So like, when you do take that time, it's like, oh, well, she's being selfish to take I think it's time. a generational, too. <laughs> yeah, that expectation came from somewhere. We are growing out of it because we're like... I don't like that. <laughs> right. Like, it doesn't mm-hmm. suit me. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, it's louder. Like, no. Yeah. Louder. Like, <laughs> exactly. But really, you know, again, going to that balance and um, you asking how to maintain the confidence every day, it's also like the sticky place is, is what taught me how to even articulate the fact that, oh, it's innate right here for this, but I even have to go to this part of things. And then go to the other side, like, well, how can I apply that confidence that I have here Mm -hmm. in this situation? Because I'm feeling sticky right here and I don't like it. Yeah. So what can I do to see, like, trying to take my own lessons where I know, you know, and apply. Absolutely. So that, and so you gain confidence there too, because you're like, okay, you know, you're pulling from your, where you overflow, I guess, like where you do know it. Yeah. And trying to apply. So you're always learning and, you know, trying to make it work. Right. So I think another boost of confidence for me is is when I go out for something and then I obtain it. Like, you know, when I, you know, yeah. I have a plan and I, you know, I or I meet a goal or, you know, I'm, I relied on myself and I came through. You know what I mean? Like that for me, it's like, OK, I can do it, mm-hmm. you know, because sometimes people, they doubt you. Whether it's, you know, family, friends, what have you. And then so that's implanted. And then I know for me... I, that's self-doubt. So, yeah. and then I'm very critical. Well, can I really do it? And then I'm overthinking and I'll become just this analytical person. So it's just, and I have to talk myself out of that, mm-hmm. you know? So, you know, being able to accomplish goals and that kind of stuff for me is a boost of confidence as well. Yeah. So. Big time. Big time. We need little victories. Yeah. And right. I think counting the little victories. I don't think it's, enough of us oh do my that. Gosh. There's it's a commercial right now that um, I think it's a lady who just had a baby, and it's talking <laughs> about her start. Like, no, it, it always talks about everyone making the, the goal, making it to the end, mm-hmm. but not about the start and people just starting, getting up and getting dressed to go to the gym, driving to the gym and starting. That's a victory. It is. It's truly it's a victory. Really if you is. did five sit-ups, that is a victory. If you mm-hmm. didn't do any yesterday and you did five today, that's a victory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think we count those. No, it's true. And it's it's so true, especially just, I guess, with weight loss specifically. Because, like, I have a huge weight loss goal. Sometimes it's so big that it just overwhelms <laughs> yeah. me. And I'm like, I can't <laughs> wait There's until no next way. May. Like, yeah, I need it now. <laughs> You know, and, and then you feel guilty if you have a, a bite of something or, you know, yeah. it's like, yeah, you like you can't. Don't oh, I had to readjust my perspective because yeah. even mm-hmm. if it takes me that year, I'm losing that Absolutely. whole time. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And that's awesome. Yeah. You know, so it's not like I don't have to wait until May to have my sexy back. Like it's going to be coming the whole, the whole time. time. Right. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, okay. I'm and back I'm on track now. You yes. are gorgeous. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Are. Yes, you are. <laughs> She didn't. You don't. You didn't see how she interacted with with her and her husband. Like I'm sorry, there was a whole lot of sexiness going on there. Like you have it. It hasn't yes. gone anywhere. Okay. Yes, girl. I love it. And you can see it. I love yeah. it. It'll stay with me forever. Yay. <laughs> Our pleasure. That's so great. So yeah. So what else? So um, what about like our peers? I mean, I mean, do you feel like they? I think encouragement because I think sometimes you you can be your energy. Sometimes you know, just your confident energy can rub off on people. Mm-hmm. You know, like I know it does for me. Like even coming, I'm nervous every time I come in here. Her <laughs> being here, I'm a little less nervous. I don't know. Aww. Maybe it's because I know her. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's a comfort thing, but. I mean, I, I think our, you know, encouragement and, and support, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. can, can boost confidence as well. Yeah. And I think that comes from really permission. Like I give myself permission. So I sure hope that that's what you get from me. Yeah. Permission to be you. Like, yeah, I'm gonna be me. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's just not much more to it. So I just, you know, um, Going back to the intention, like I re- I read the book The Power of Intention, and I love it because it resonated with me. Like I do events, and everybody has always has a great time, and mm-hmm. I love doing it, and everybody's always so happy, and there's always such good energy. But it really comes from like that's my intention. It's my intention for myself in this world, so it's my intention for others, and right. people feel that. And um, of course, that's a confidence boost- booster because you can see it in. And kind of like a now manifestation, like you said, the celebrating, like it is yeah. every moment, you know, depending on if you're looking at it, like yeah. this is a moment. Yeah. So it's, you know, 
Yeah, and paying attention. Is, mm-hmm. Yeah, and being alert. in intention. Yeah, and you know, moving in that flow. Yeah, I think it's also nice that you're able to identify Jamie's positive impact in your life because there's there are toxic people that will bring you down. Yeah, you know, and so being able to say, no, this person, this person is a gem, and that person is a rock, so I'm gonna throw them away because they they affect me negatively, right, you right. know, but being surrounded by people who are like minded or give you an example to, to you know, strive for, or lift you up. Like that's really important. Right. Too. Right. And it's, those people right. don't have to be around. Cause I, we were just saying, I haven't seen you in like two months. Like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not every day, not all the time, but you know, I think it's important that you check in, you know, you check mm-hmm. up and you, yeah. and we do see how one another it is doing, you know, because some, you don't know what other people are going through, yeah. you know, a lot yeah. of times. And, you know, I lost my dad a few years back and I didn't think I would feel the way that I did. You know what I mean? So it was nice to have the support of, you know, my friends. Um, and it just, people just go through changes, you know, and people, things affect them differently. You know, the loss of a job can affect someone differently than it would me. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's just, I just think it's important that we check in, you know, especially when we know we have those good energy people around us. So, yes. yeah. yeah. So, cause they help us to grow. Yeah. And that was another thing we were going to talk about learning and growing. What's pushing mm-hmm. you to to grow right now Mm, what's pushing me to grow um the possibility Uh like i see the more that i grow and the better i function out of an understanding coming from kind of like a higher vibration Mm -hmm. is making changes and i'm here for it i want to have fun and keep having well i'm always having fun (laughs) i'm always having fun let me not down but just even more like of what i want right and I'm having fun seeing that unfold through lessons. That's awesome. Yeah. What about you, Firefox? What's pushing you to grow right now? Other than my my beautiful boys, I finally figured out what I want to do in life. Oh, that's amazing. It, it, it was amazing. It was this huge breakthrough. And I'd been on a completely different track mm-hmm. with school. So starting over. And it it's so exciting to me because even though I have so much school left for it once I'm there and once I'm working that passion like the the problems that I see in society that hurt my heart that hurt my soul I'm gonna be fighting directly Mm -hmm. and it's like it's not gonna be just it's not just gonna be me yelling in my living room that this isn't fair and why are people still like this I'm going to be there actively fighting it it's not just my words it's my actions Mm -hmm. you know and i Preach that to my kids every day, that injustice, you never, ever, ever sit down quietly for. You stand against it, even if you stand alone. Right. And I'll be able to be that example, example. of, mm-hmm. like, I'm, I'm not just words. It's it's action. It's living. And and here's a little path, too, to do it, you know? Yeah. Not necessarily follow my footsteps, but, like, get involved with causes or, you know, just stand up and use that voice that you have and use your body to say no and to form that wall to right. protect those who can't protect themselves, you know, like just to be able to live that truth for me is so motivating, even though it's far away. It's like, I'm still amped. Like right. every time, every class I finish, I'm just like, there's more knowledge and I'm getting it, mm-hmm. you know? And yeah. For me, like, you're I'm motivated. So motivated. Yeah, that's like, awesome. Like, so starved for this knowledge. Yeah. Love it. And I just I keep learning purpose. more. It's you're so hungry. Full of purpose. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. Yay. It's amazing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. Well, for me, um, let's see, I started mm-hmm. a new, new job. Um, so I'm back in mortgage. I mean, I was at another uh, a mortgage company before, but I was, I had an accounting position. So I'm back in a mortgage position. So that's pushing me to grow a little bit, learning new stuff, which is, it's cool. Cause I love the industry. And then two for me, my relationships. So, I mean, that's always, you know, it pushes you to be better and, you know, kind of when you're in a relationship, you, you mirror mm-hmm. kind of the good and the bad. So mm-hmm. it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, I gotta go deal with this too. Okay. You know, so that, that's, that's, that's pushing me to grow. So, but I, I, I'm all for it. I'm a person that's all for self improvements. You know, about, I'm all for learning. You wanted to uh, mention something about the retrograde, retrograde, gay, gay grade. How do you say it? <laughs> oh, like, Venus retrograde. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, she's all into this stuff, I and love it. I don't know about it. So, share a little bit about it. Yeah, there's just some good stuff going on. I actually, well, hmm, I wonder if I have something that I could pick up. So from March 4th to the 15th, Venus goes retrograde, which is the time of now. 
And also we just had the spring season start and then we're also moving into Aries and there's all this stuff happening astrologically that I'm just looking into. I'd rather to share more accurately, read you something from someone who is actually a specialist in this because this is what inspires me and the way I imply it, you know, apply it to my own life. Right. Um, well, just being kind of little things that I'm into, like, you know, an intentional jewelry company. So I love my crystals and what's the name? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she has some on by the way. Yeah, like, I do. <laughs> this is my serenity stack. <laughs> so, um, but just incorporating that in my life. So it's get stoned to get stoned with us, <laughs> an invitation to your higher self. And it's a lot of education on that. So just Using what I know, I have my mentor, Shannon Yvette, who's amazing. You know, I was raised Christian. Um, you know, I love the Bible. That's how we, we actually met working <laughs> together. And and just to share this story real quick. <laughs> yeah. I love it. And I felt so bad. But I had, I mean, I was yeah, just, right. I didn't miss a Sunday service. I didn't miss a Wednesday service. I was in, very heavily involved during this time. And so at the time, I don't know, I just, God had me working at my job. You know, my jobs are never always just about the job itself. It's about God working through me through, you know, and to reaching people. So anyway, um, I was inviting, you know, all these people that I met to come to church and she was one of the ones that, <laughs> that I did not invite, but we had a, <laughs> and so one day she's like, you know, I have a question to ask you. And it was so sweet. And, and she had gotten this little voice and she's like, you know, why haven't you invited me to church? And it just broke my heart. And I mean, I crumbled and I was like, please come this Sunday. <laughs> I mean, but when I tell you we were like a good 15 deep in church, we needed the whole entire like row. We did. Like, oh, it was, I know it was, it was so <laughs> awesome. So anyway, get back to your, um, we went for five years straight. Mm -hmm. Every Sunday. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a moment. Right, but. right. <laughs> oh my God. That just reminded me. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to make me cry because oh. that changed my life. Oh, that's awesome. I love yeah. it. So. <laughs> I didn't even make you cry. <laughs> yeah. I, was like, oh I totally forgot, but that's true. Mm -hmm. It's like, and I could tell like God was calling and that's what's beautiful about being a woman. Like you intuitively know where you're supposed to be. be. Yeah. Yeah. And you end up there if you listen. Like, yeah. I could have been like, oh, she didn't invite me. But, exactly. Like, you know, there could have been so ways true. to yeah. that. And I felt like, honestly, he led her to me. And totally it was just like, he did. and quite, I mean, totally. I had dated this guy that she was her, like, boyfriend. And like, so the way we were kind of introduced, it was just, we had this kind of weird little thing, mm -hmm. you know? So it, it just all, and it all just came full circle. It really did. You know, it, it just, it really did. And that's the beauty of um, some I want some I want to share about the Venus retrograde. So let me see. Oh, the full part. Okay, so it's a lot. Okay, so there's a process to it, and it's like we started with there was a Virgo full moon on March 12th, and that was all about deep healing. But we were in Pisces, and Virgo is very like strong. Get it done. Like you gotta. There's no more time to say it to anybody else. Right. It's nobody. It's you. Okay? And I love you. So let's do it. Right. And the Pisces come in with, it's like, I'm healing now. It's like, I'm here for you, but we got to do this, girl. Right. We got to get it together. It's nobody right. else. Nobody's going to save you. Right. We're going to, let's just go direct and do what we got to do. All right. So we had that energy. And then now you move to like the, um, what the whole retrograde about is about, which is like loving more deeply. And even to do that, it starts with self care, just loving yourself more deeply and where you can be with things and, um, giving yourself an opportunity to revisit because retrograde is always going back to things like the, the ways you've loved mm -hmm. and things and situations in love and just revisiting them from where really where you are now okay. and also in, and deepening in, in the way you love. So when you look back, you kind of like, well, how could I, what I know now, how could I have loved deeper? You know, um, so I basically taking your lessons from before and applying and, them now and looking at what you don't want anymore. And some right. of it, it's just time to get rid of. Right. It just is. And you feel it, you know, it, and it's not that serious anymore. We're just over it. It's and spring cleaning it's time spring too. It's spring cleaning. Yeah. And yeah. that's another aspect of, so okay. then you get the equinox after the like hardcore lesson, then you get the refresh and then now Aries is like, do and do you, it's such a, I get do you boo out of it. Cause it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's the first sign of the Zodiac and it's a very direct, like Aries have fun. They, they, it's not, it's, 
asking you to be selfish, but they're also very loving, like most amazing signing people. But there's a selfish, my girlfriend's a, an Aries. a good selfish, <laughs> yeah, right? So, but you, so you get it. My mom, my best friend, like you know, so you get that. And then um, it's also in the house of expanding financials. So I love that you found your purpose, because girl, your money's gonna come with that too. Like sixteen years, but I'm I'm there. <laughs> it's, I know it's coming. Yeah, no, no, but right. you did, did, but it's giving you fresh energy for that too, and a fresh perspective. If you're going to deepen your love, you're going to deepen your financial house too, and the Venus retrograde speaks to both. So it's just kind of like looking at that, and then I, and incorporating that type of stuff. Just from what I'm reading, I'm not an astrologist. I'm I'm reading daily on things that and what sticks with me, and repeating to you right. the gist of the filter I'm getting from it, but right. just incorporating that in fun ways. Like I made a Venus retrograde stack. And so my girl did a lavender rose bath soap. So, and, um, I did like a stone stack and a touchstone and, and you know, we're, it's just great. like, right. I got eat, just, I don't know, like a community of stuff and you know, my stone company and just being with my group of girls and us doing what we do, but in the vein of like, all right, guys, let's go. Let's keep each other. Accountable. Let's do the stuff we got to do. Like, Absolutely. Let's and you're creating, a, and creating. A, um, a stream of income as well. Yeah, you know? of course. Which and, is but it's doing something that, that interests you and that you love. And it's also helping. You know, some people are really into that stuff, it's, you know? Well, back to the intention at the top mm-hmm. of the day. I mean, if you love jewelry like me, I was, I've had more, I have more jewelry than clothes. That's right. just right. always been my she deal. Does. Yes. <laughs> so it's just kind of like, what? I can, like, what I wear, I wear statement pieces. I'm, yeah. I'll wear a $2 top. Seven dollar jeans and whatever, right. but my jewel like it's always gonna be like, oh my god, because I love that. Exactly. So now to be a part of it, like it was always something for me, mm-hmm. but to have the intention of um, the meaning, because the living stones from it started with living stones of the Bible. They put them in the breastplates of the soldiers, right? And, you know things like that. So there's still an energy that they hold, and um, depending on how you're feeling that day or what's going on, to be able to kind of pick your energy. But it's cute. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm having fun. Like, this is, you know, awesome. So. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, do you have anything else in closing, Firefox? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, the definition that you, I love that you both brought it and read it. And, but I feel like for confidence, like, the answer's in the definition. It literally says appreciation. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And gratitude is a phenomenal way to shift your perspective out of the negative and to build yourself up. So like I always believe and I tell my kids that don't complain or don't make a complaint unless you can offer a solution. Right. So like take it one step further. Right? Absolutely. Bring it one step right. further. And it, that's, that's power. It is. It's yeah. very much very take much your power em- back. empowers yeah. you. Yeah. And my husband and I um, were we're very stable but we read books on marriage and communication to stay stable and one of the things was Don't say anything negative to your partner until you've said three positive things. And I let that trickle Mm. into my kids, into myself. Mm -hmm. Right. That action, taking gratitude and making it an action item really changes like, oh man, I hate that I have to pay taxes. Well, taxes mean I have a job and I'm grateful for that. And now you've taken that negative and you've turned it into a positive and that keeps your energy light and it keeps you going. And so I think a good way to build confidence if you're struggling with everything that you don't have and everything that makes you feel not confident is to look at what you do have. Mm -hmm. And even if you can only find one thing, sit on it, Mm -hmm. let it manifest and grow. And once you change that energy into positivity, you'll just tractor beam more of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And so I love that it's literally in the definition. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it can be built upon and learned, you know, like it, it just, it, it, it takes putting in the work. Mm-hmm. It takes putting in the work. And like you said, shifting and and talking to yourself, you know, speaking yeah. to yourself, appreciating yourself. So a- absolutely. Did you have anything in closing, Jay? Uh, no, I think all has been said and said so well. Like, I enjoyed this conversation mm-hmm. and so glad I was asked to be here. And <laughs> I know. Yeah. This was great. Mm-hmm. This is my first time, guys. <laughs> so I appreciate yeah, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> And you guys, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Her Chronicles one You guys have an awesome day. Bye. Bye.